quick little review of this table that we did yesterday. Um, we define distance as uh, how far an object has traveled, right? How far an object has traveled. If I drive 340 kilometers to Edmonton, that's my distance traveled. Is uh, distance a vector or a scalar? Scalar, good. It's a scalar. Direction doesn't matter. 340 kilometers, done. What's the symbol for distance? Good, it's delta D. What does the delta mean, by the way? The little triangle? Change, change right. So it's, uh, if you've traveled the distance, it's inferring that you've changed something, right? It's inferring that you've changed where you are, right? Distance, delta D. And the units for distance would be, the typical units at least, the standard units would be meters. Good. What about position? I'm going to ask you to define this one for me. Position is defined as anyone? Yep. Yeah, it's where something is. What's your position right now? Okay, it's at you're in your desk. Sure. Okay. Um, you could say that you're. This is north, by the way. Okay, that's north because Calgary is that way, right? You could say you're about four meters north of the whiteboard. You could say you're about four meters south of the back bulletin board. You could say you're about two and a half meters to the east of the window. Right? We can define our position relative to uh, just about whatever we want. There has to be a reference point because it is a vector quantity. So we have to define it relative to something. It has to have a direction. It is a vector quantity. It doesn't do any good to say my position is uh, three meters. Three me like, what does that mean? Three meters north of the whiteboard. Uh, what's my position? Oh, two and a half meters. Two and a half meters from what? Two and a half meters east of the window. We have to have a direction, and that's why we say where we are is a vector quantity. What's displacement? Oh, sorry, what's the symbol for uh, position? What's the symbol for position? Good. D, not delta D, just D with a half arrow over top of it. And, of course, the units are going to be meters. Displacement is defined as? Yep, Kelly? Good. It's the change in position. So it's not, it's not where you are. It's where you are as compared to where you were. It's your change in position. So what's the symbol for displacement going to be? Oh, well, we know this. We figured this out ourselves yesterday, right? Good. It's displacement. Displacement is position, but change in position. So it's going to be a delta position. And the units, of course, are going to be meters. It's going to be a vector or a scalar. If position is a vector, then displacement is going to be a vector. Good. Now, displacement and distance, same thing, right? Same thing, except one has direction, one doesn't. If I drive to Edmonton, I've, my distance traveled is 340 kilometers. My displacement is 340 kilometers to the north. Right? If Alex drives from Toronto to Calgary, his distance is about 3,500 kilometers. His displacement is about 3,500 uh, 3, kilometers to the west. So it's the same thing, right? Except one has direction, one doesn't have direction. What about this? Okay, what about this? What if I walk, what if I walk, let's say this is my zero point, the front, the front wall here, okay? What if I walk two steps to the north, and then I walk three more steps to the north? What's my distance traveled? What's my distance traveled there? Two steps to the north, three more steps to the north. What's my distance traveled? What is it? Five, five steps, Five steps. We don't need to say to the north, right? Just five steps. What's my displacement in that case? Five steps to the north. Again, same thing, right? Alex went 3,500 kilometers, 3,500 kilometers to the west. Same deal, right? But what about this one? I walk three steps uh, to the north. One, two, three. And then I turn around and walk two steps to the south. One, two. What's my distance traveled? No. What is it? Five steps. My distance traveled is five steps. The odometer in my car, if I did something like that, is going to read five. 
right? What's my displacement? One to the north. You see how sometimes displacement and distance are the same thing, except one has direction, but sometimes distance and displacement aren't the same thing? Can you work out for me right now a, a general little rule as to when they will be the same number and when they won't be the same number? Yeah? Good. When I travel in the same direction, the number is going to be the same, but displacement will have direction. When I change direction, then displacement and distance will be two different numbers, and displacement will still have direction. So, if Alex goes 3,500 kilometers to the, uh, to the west to go to Calgary, and then he decides, for whatever reason, he wants to live in Regina, and he drives 800 kilometers to the east again, his distance would be 4,300 kilometers, but his, his displacement would now only be 2,700 kilometers because his change in position, he's only 2,700 kilometers from where he started in Toronto. Make sense? Good. There are two ways that we can find displacement, and it depends upon what you're given as to which way you're going to use. If you're given two different positions, and remember what position is, it's where you are. Okay, my position right now is one meter to the north of the board, of the whiteboard. That's not how far I've gone. That's not my change in position. That's not my displacement. That's where I am now. That's my position. If I'm given two different positions, if you're given two positions, then you're going to subtract. So in other words, the displacement in that case will be equal to the final position minus the initial position. My initial position is one meter to the north. My final position is four meters to the north. My displacement is three meters to the north. It's the final minus the initial, four minus one. If you're given two displacements, which remember are different than positions. Displacements are change in positions. So if I'm given two positions, it would be something like, oh, I'm one, meters to the, one meter to the north, then I'm four meters to the north. Given two displacements would be, I walked one meter to the north, then I walked four meters to the north. If I'm given two displacements, what do you think you're going to do to find the total displacement? Add them. You're going to add them. So sometimes you got to subtract, sometimes you got to add. It depends upon what you're given. So we got an example here now. Remember, we're talking about distance, position, and displacement. We got to remember the definitions for each of those three. We got to remember whether they're vectors or scalars. Here's the question. It says a student is walking from 7-Eleven to the dog stadium at the bottom of the hill. 7-Eleven is one kilometer south of HDA. The dog stadium is blank kilometers. I'm not sure why it doesn't have a number there. The dog stadium is 2.5 kilometers south of HDA. We want to know the displacement of the student as she walks from 7-Eleven to the dog stadium. I see two numbers in this question, one kilometer south of HDA and 2.5 kilometers south of HDA. Can anybody tell me what those numbers represent? Do they represent distance? Do they represent position? Or do they represent displacement? In other words, that one kilometer and the 2.5 kilometers, are those how far I've traveled, where I am, 
or the change in where I am? Bruce? Those are both positions, right? Those are both defining where this girl is at two different times. Those are two different positions. So I'm going to write that down as given here. I'm going to say DI, my initial position is, well, let's say it's one kilometer to the south. Watch carefully what I'm going to do here. I don't want to write in the word south. I don't want to do that because it's going to get cumbersome, especially later on in the year when you start talking about directions. I'm going to define north as positive. Or I could define it as, as negative, but usually I define north as positive. That means my one kilometer south is going to be negative. Does that make sense? If north is positive, then south is negative. My final position here is going to be uh, 2.5 kilometers, right? Is that right? I see a couple heads doing this. I see a couple heads doing this. Kelly? It should be negative because that's to the south as well. If I define north as positive at the beginning, then I have to stick with that through the whole question. Now, I could have... And I'm going to do that in a different color over here. I could have said north, uh, sorry, south is positive, and I could have said di is positive one kilometer, and df is positive 2.5 kilometers. Okay, that's fine. It's just that usually positive is north. That's the standard way of defining it. So that's the way that I went with it. We're going to solve it both ways, and we're going to see how you end up getting the same answer, regardless of how you define positive north or south. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to this. If we want to find displacement from two different positions, what are we going to do? Are we going to add them or subtract them? Good. We're going to subtract them. So we're going to say delta D is equal to DF minus DI, and it's going to be negative 2.5 kilometers minus negative one kilometer. That ends up being negative 1.5 kilometers. Let's do it over here, though. Let's say delta D is equal to DF minus DI. It's equal to 2.5 minus 1, which gives me 1.5 kilometers. Do these answers agree with each other? Negative 1.5 and positive 1.5? Those right? What does negative mean when I did it in blue over here? Yep, south. What does positive mean when I did it in green over here? South. So regardless of which way we do it, we get the right answer, right? We're getting 1.5 kilometers to the south regardless of which way we do it. Lots of you are looking at this and saying, well, why wouldn't we have done it as po all this positive, right? It's easier math-wise, right? Yeah, it probably is here. It probably is. It's not always. I did it this way just to show you that, well, mainly that that's the normal way is to make north positive. Okay? Lots of times we get questions where we have north and south in the same question, okay? and then it probably makes a little bit more sense to make north positive. Okay? In the end, you got to define north and north as, I uh, sorry, positive as something. You can define it really any way you want, because you're going to end up getting the same answer either way. Good? So what do we take away from this? you got to find displacement from positions, then we got to subtract, right? Let's try another one. In this one, a student walks 1.5 kilometers south from 7-Eleven to the dog stadium, then turns around and walks 2.5 kilometers north back to HTA. Calculate the distance traveled by the student and the displacement of the student. Isn't this pretty much the same question? What's different about this question? What's different about this question? There's no position. Well, wait a second. If we go back to the last one, don't we have the same numbers, 1.5 and 2.5? Okay, if 1.5, oh, no, I guess it was 1 and 2.5, it's pretty much the same. 
If those aren't positions, what are they? Yeah, those are displacements. Those aren't a measurement of where this student is. These are measurements of how much the position of the student has changed by. Listen, this student walked 1.5 kilometers, then walked 2.5 kilometers. This student isn't there and there. It's the student has moved this far and this far. So here's what I want to do now. Once again, I'm going to define north as positive, although you could define south as positive. I'm going to make delta D displacement 1, negative 1.5 kilometers, because that's how far he walked the first time, the first displacement. I'm going to make delta D2 positive 2.5 kilometers, because that's how far he walked the second time, his displacement the second time. Let's find displacement first. Displacement is what? If I have two different positions, I subtract them. If I have two different displacements, I add them. So I'm going to say delta D is equal to delta D1 plus delta D2, which is a negative 1.5 kilometers plus 2.5 kilometers which is 1.0 kilometers. Look, it has a similar effect in this case because one of them is a negative as subtracting, but that only happens because one of them is a negative. We're still adding, right? Hey, I got a positive 1. What does that mean? It means to the north. My total displacement is 1 kilometer to the north. Think about that, guys. I started at 7-Eleven. Look, I went to the dog stadium, but then I ended up at HTA. I ended up one kilometer north of where I started, one kilometer north of 7-Eleven. That's the displacement. How am I going to find the distance, which remember is delta D without the arrow over it? Well, we haven't, I haven't told you that. Well, you guys are smart. You're going to figure this out, right? Yeah. Penny? Yeah, we're going to add the distances, not the displacements, but the distances. Do I have the distances? Good. We just dropped the signs, right? 1.5 kilometers plus 2.5 kilometers is 4 kilometers. Now, be careful here. This is a positive as well, but it doesn't mean north, right? Because we're talking about a scalar here. It just... It's always going to be a positive when we're talking about a scalar. When we're talking about a vector, then the positive means to the north. Is that okay? The big trick on these questions is recognizing when you've got a position and when you've got a displacement. If you're talking about where you are, it's a position. If you're talking about how far something's gone, it's a distance or displacement. If you've got positions, then subtract. If you've got displacements, then add. All right? I got a couple questions for you to work on from your textbook here, which you don't actually have yet. We're still working on that. Um, but you can uh, look at it on the board here for today at least, okay? Take a look at these ones and do them in your notes. Just um, don't copy these out. Please don't copy these out because you will have your textbook. Just uh, reference it in your notes. Say, practice problems, page 9. And then you can always go back and look at them from your book. All right, let's have a look at question number 3 here. It says, while building a wall, a bricklayer sweeps the cement back and forth. If she swings her hand back and forth a distance of 1.4 meters four times, calculate the distance and displacement her hand travels during that time. Okay, what do I have given to me here? She swings her hand back and forth 1.7 meters each time. Is that a position or a displacement? Is that where her hand is or the change in where her hand is? That's displacement, yeah. So we're going to say that we have four displacements. Um, we have four displacements. The first displacement we would say would be, um, let's say, I'm going to say back is positive. 
Okay, does that make sense? Okay, back is positive, then fourth would be negative. My first displacement would be 1.70 meters. My second displacement would be, what would it be? Negative 1.7 meters. By the way, you don't have to define the direction exactly the same way. The bottom line is, if D1 is positive 1.7, then D2 has to be negative. You could have just as easily made D1 negative, and D2 would have to be positive, opposite to it, right? D3 would be 1.7 meters again, and D4 would be negative 1.7 meters. Uh, we want to find the displacement. What are we going to do with these displacements here? Let's add them up. 1.7 plus neg 1.7 plus pause plus neg 1.7 is zero. The displacement is zero. Usually we say displacement has a direction, but since it's zero, we don't have to we don't have to show one, right? What's my distance traveled? We're going to add these up as well, right? But we're going to add them up, not paying any attention to the negatives here. 1.7 plus 1.7 plus 1.7 plus 1.7. Now is 6.8 meters. Now, that positive doesn't mean backwards, right? Back, because this is a scalar. The positive doesn't mean anything here. Good? All right, I'm going to give you a worksheet uh, that you're going to uh, spend a little bit more time working on here. Same type of stuff. Just to give you a little bit more practice before you, before you go home and, and struggle with this on your own. Okay, let's take a look at our worksheet. Three questions that were requested, four, six, and eight. Question number four, as a woman begins driving her car 25 kilometers north of Calgary, sometime later the woman and her car are 100 kilometers north of Calgary. What's her distance traveled and what's her displacement? Remember what we said here a, a little while ago? When we have a reference point, it's probably going to be what? Position or displacement? Position. She begins not 25 meters north, but 25 meters north of something, north of Calgary. That's going to be a position. In fact, I'm going to make that my initial position. We're going to call it DI. I'll make north positive, right? Sometime later, the woman in her car are 100 kilometers north of Calgary. Again, a position. There's a reference point here. I'm somewhere north of Calgary. We're going to say that's DF, and we're going to say that's positive 100 kilometers. I want to find the distance traveled by the woman in her car. I want to say the distance is 100 kilometers minus 25 kilometers, which is 75 kilometers. And my displacement is also 100 minus 25, which is... 75 kilometers. So the answer is the same for both of them. What does the positive mean right here for displacement? It means north. What does the positive mean right here for distance? Nothing. Okay, 75 to the north, 75 kilometers. Positive means something, positive means nothing. Somebody asked me, is it okay to write in the words north, south, east, west? Sure it is. Okay. You could write in north there, that's fine. Instead of using the positives and negatives, should we write in north here? Absolutely not. Okay, that isn't that's not just not necessary, it's actually wrong. Okay, the distance is not 75 kilometers north. The displacement is 75 to the north. Okay, let's take a look at number six. A woman begins driving her car 200 kilometers north of Calgary. Sometime is this the same question? No, not quite, I guess. Sometime later, the woman in her car, 100 kilometers south of Calgary. Positions or displacements? Those are positions. We have a reference point there, right? Okay. We're at this spot. Then she's at this spot. My initial position, my initial position, I should say, is 200 kilometers north. If we define north as positive, my final position is negative 100 kilometers. Let's do displacement first here. Displacement is final minus initial. So we're going to say it's uh, negative 100 minus 200 or negative 300 kilometers. Or you could have said 300 kilometers to the south. What don't you want to say? If I said negative 300 or 300 to the south, what do you not want to say here for an answer? 
Yeah. Right. Let's not say negative 300 south. Okay, what does that mean? That would be north, right? Okay, so it's either neg 300 or it's 300 to the south. Both are perfectly correct, but don't say both. Now, what's the easiest way to find the distance traveled here? Did she change direction? If she changed direction, distance and displacement will be two different numbers. Did she change direction? No, she didn't. She was north, then she was south, but the whole time she was moving, she was moving to the south. She didn't change direction, therefore her distance is going to be the same number as the displacement. We'll just drop the sign. Negative means south here. What does the positive mean here? Nothing. It's a scalar, right? Please stop me if you have a question or if anything I say doesn't make any sense, okay? Or doesn't make complete sense. One more here for now, at least. The man begins driving his car 50 kilometers east of Banff. A while later, the man in his car 300 kilometers east of Banff. Even later, the man in his car are 400 kilometers east of Banff. What's the distance traveled by the man in his car? What's the displacement? Let's go displacement first. Uh, what do we got here? Um, oh, we got th oh man, we got three here. Right, three positions. Which ones do we care about? Initial and final, right? Let's make east positive. When I'm finding displacement, I don't really care about the middle. Remember that question? Uh, it was one question earlier on where we run around the track two times. My total displacement in that case was zero because I ended up where I started. I don't care where I was on the track three minutes after I started. I care where I am at the beginning and at the end. It's the same case here. I don't care that I was 300 kilometers east of Banff sometime later on. I care that I ended up 400 kilometers east of Banff. My displacement will be we add or subtract. The positions, because they have a reference point, we add or subtract them. We're going to subtract them. So it's going to be 400 kilometers minus 50. It's going to give me 350 kilometers. Um, what's my distance travel? Did I change direction? No, I didn't. If I didn't change direction, then my distance is going to be same thing, 350 kilometers. What's the positive mean here? East, right? It means east here. What's the positive mean here? Nothing, right? Okay, I'm going to give you a few more minutes, and then I'm going to take a look before you guys leave at question number nine as a group. It's similar to number eight, but it's a little bit harder, a little bit harder. Okay. If you haven't tried that one, maybe try that one now so that you've had a chance to look at it at least before we do it as a class. Okay, let's have a look at that last question, question number nine. This one says a man begins driving his car 50 kilometers east of Banff. A while later, he's 300 kilometers east of Banff. A while later, he's... 150 kilometers east of Banff. What's the difference here between question number eight and nine? He's changing direction, right? So now we know that distance and displacement will not be the same number. Let's get displacement, okay? Displacement in question number nine is going to be my final position minus my initial position. So for question B, we're going to say displacement is, what do we got here? 150 kilometers east of Banff minus the initial position, which is 50 kilometers east of Banff. My displacement is 100 kilometers. How do I find the distance here? I can't just say it's 100 kilometers, right? you got to get the displacement for both phases of his trip, and then you got to add them up. So, or sorry, the distance, I should say. So let's... Let's think about this. Let's say the distance traveled the first time, 50 to 300. My distance traveled was 250 kilometers. The distance, hold on. The distance traveled the second time was, well, I went 300 to 150, so I traveled 150. 
What's my total distance? Add distances up. It's going to be 400 kilometers. Make sense? What's that positive mean? East. What's that positive mean? Nothing. All right? If you haven't finished the worksheet, finish it up for homework. We'll take a look at a couple more questions tomorrow. Quiz on this on Friday. Okay, quiz on Friday.